there's been several expeditions for uh, deep sea drilling in the South China Sea. And the one I'll be talking about is the uh, Joides Resolution uh, study started in 2017 um, and 2018. The uh, I, It was requested that I explain a little bit about the technique. So this is just a really fast overview. We were using riserless drilling, which is the example on the left, which is the Joyce Resolution, and it um, uses seawater to drill, and the drill bit is at the bottom of the hole, and this is the schematic for uh, going in and out. If you have to change the bit, you go in and out with this reentry cone uh, open on the seafloor, and then you can bring the nine-meter cores up to the ship. They look like this. They uh, are laid out on racks where they are cut into 1.5 meter sections. And then um, those sections are split. Uh, they're numbered according to a, the numbering uh, technique that's you know common for the holes. This is an example of a different core, but the cores, once they're split, they're split into an archive half and a working half, and then they are analyzed for specific things that you might want to know about, um, including things like microfossils, geochemistry, the pore water content, um, the magnetization, the lithology, and the deformation features. And this depends on what exactly you're drilling. So we switch on what we're looking at if we get uh, you know, sediments versus basalts, for example, in this study. The South China Sea, the um, targets of interest were really to determine whether we could see either one of these end member margins for this uh, rift basin. It's a marginal rift basin, but both sides are preserved. The, the side that's uh, adjacent to Hong Kong is the northern side. And the um, these are the two simple models that you know people had been using for rifted margins. People, it, there had been thoughts that the northern side of the Salton Sea was a magma poor rifted margin, and then there might have been subcontinental mantle exposed that we could drill. So we actually had five uh, possible models to test scenarios for the structure, um, depending on what the uh, which layer would be the weakest in terms of the uh, mechanical behavior. Uh, I'm sure you have seen these kinds of things in plenty of talks before, but the idea was to see, did we have, what did we have with the continent ocean transition? Was it uh, upper continental crust? Was it um, man continental mantle, lower continental crust, something in between? And so um, they uh, scheduled us for actually two drilling legs, um, it was IODP Expedition 367 and then 368. And then because 368 had uh, mechanical problems, they were given more time later to do 368X to study the rifting um, constraints in this region. And the, let's see if I can like, get this out of the way. Maybe not. Um, the photos of the people on the, cruises are here and the maps of where we drilled on the northern margin are here and then you can see on the bottom right um, we have the transect going through a seismic line uh, showing you the locations starting with the shallower uh, holes which were on the outer margin high then holes uh, including 1502 at the continent ocean transition 1500 was embryonic oceanic crust, and then 1503 was the regular spreading crust. And the 1499 was one of the earlier holes that was drilled on a different expedition, but ended up being valu valuable for the interpretation. So in a map, this looks complicated, but the uh, the holes we were drilling are all the ones here, U-1505, 4-2, um, and then um, Sun Jen and I were out actually on our leg, we drilled 1499, U 1499 and U 1500. And then the next leg went, they went back and did the other targets and the, um, the 1400 ones are from the previous expedition. So here you're seeing the magnetic anomalies that have been identified. And then you see some OBS lines that had been run 
to uh, help to constrain the margin, as well as a lot of seismic reflection lines that were run at shallower um, parts of the shelf because of uh, petroleum research. So the results that we got, if you look at um, this, again, zeroing in on the margin, is um, that we have uh, water depths here down to like 4,000. Um, 3,500 meters. And then the the um, drill holes are on these seismic, these lines that you can project them onto the seismics and look at what you're expecting in terms of the structures. And in addition, there are some deep toe magnetic lines that help us identify uh, where we think the continent ocean transition should be based on the uh, existence of the magnetic anomalies that are identified. Um, by this is by Lee et al. 2014. So we were working in the northwest sub basin of the South China Sea. There's also the southwest sub basin, which has a dead printing center in it on this uh, pro triangular production of the basin. And then the east sub basin is further south. So there's also a fossil ridge south of the area that we were working in. We were working right along the edge of the margin. And we published the results in Larson et al. in Nature Geoscience. And um, the uh, zooming in on this northwestern sub basin and looking at where the drill holes are and looking at the um, depths to acoustic basement, we have this colored map on the right that shows you that we were on these ridges. We labeled ridge A, B, and C according to the distance from the margin down into the oceanic crust. And so um, if you look at this, uh, these seismic cross sections, you'll see that we drilled the, um, on this top cross section here, cross section A, uh, sorry, um, the first cross section in this panel, um, you can see that we drilled ridges A, B, and well, A and B um, here at, in our expedition. So at 1499 and 1500 were drilled there and then the outer margin high was drilled next. Um, that was at oh, shallower water depths um, and by Expedition 368. And then the intent was to drill Ridge C by Expedition, well, at the hole that um, they had to go back and redo because of the equipment problems uh, on 368. So when we look at the results of this, um, we can see that we have changes in the MOHO configuration uh, going along. We think it's continental MOHO, basically, under the outer margin high and under ridge A. But then there's, uh, by the time you get to ridges B and C, it's probably oceanic MOHO. And so this is one of the things that we wanted to check with uh, actual samples. And so we didn't find what you might have expected in the sense that if you're testing for serpentinized mantle or sea, seaward dipping reflectors, we did not find either of those in this transect. But what you'll see here is if you um, show going from shallower to deeper water, the contents of what we found, we found um, in the outer margin high, we had sandstones with gravels, maybe with mesozoicate, and then um, some green cysts with mylonite. Uh, also on the, let's see, where is that? That's 1504. Okay, so um, we we had a gravel layer in 1499, and then we had um, altered basalts in 1502, which was um, like, um, that was basically ridge A. And then we had uh, in ridge B, where we drilled hole 1500, we actually had pillow basalts which was surprising because we didn't expect it necessarily to look like o I, um, oceanic crust, but it, it, it did. So the summary of this whole thing is in the Larson et al. paper, and what it shows is that the pillow basalts, which we found in a uh, whole 1500 on Ridge B, are uh, approximately 30 million years old, and they seem to be associated with cron 11 and um, in terms of magnetic anomalies 
and go up to younger times. And so our interpretation from this is that actually that's already likely actually real seafloor spreading, even though it was very close to the um, the margin and not as, uh, you know, it was really surprising to find such good pillow basalts at that particular location. So we came up with a model that was published by Larson et al. for the, the way that we could have gotten the melt in here and the explanation for Ridge A, which is the which was sampled in holes 1499 and 1502, was that it was um, continental crust, but with um, some basaltic volcanism affecting it. And then by you get the time you get to Ridge B, you're either on um, mainly igneous crust or like nascent seafloor spreading. And then by the time you get to Ridge C, it would be actual regular seafloor spreading and not very far away which means you had really rapid transition to um, the sp spreading uh, from when the rifting started or when the continental rifting started. So um, in the in this region, there's been a tremendous amount of other work that's been done, as including work that was done after our cruise and a lot of oil company seismic lines. And um, the... Uh, you know, the outer margin high has a lot more detail. They have detachment faults and younger volcanism there. And um, we later on, uh, Sun Jan and her Chinese colleagues have gone and done more OBS lines. So they understand more what the configuration is of the um, the lower part of the crust in there. But we, uh, as far as the particular drilling results that we got, um, there is a change in roughness of the basement reflector as you go along this line towards the uh, true sea floor, which we think is at Ridge Sea, and possibly also 1500 based on the pillow basalts. So that would be like Ridge B. Um, and so the main, if we look at the map to the basement reflector depths, um, there's a decrease in the roughness of the basement reflector as you go out along this along the continental margin crossing the continent ocean boundary and you get to ridge b and this uh the other thing you see which i'm not showing you here but the magnetic anomalies are stronger as you go out towards the oceanic crust and they're pretty weak in here and we think this is actual you know formation of new oceanic crust but maybe in a rougher fashion so maybe less magnetism and more faulting at the early part of the spreading history so in summary, the key takeaways were that uh, Ridge A is continental, but it was thinned and overprinted by uh, more volcanism, even slightly before rifting completely took started. And then Ridge B is oceanic or transitional based on the fact that it had um, more of composition, pillow lavas, and the moho style that you see in the reflect seismic reflection data. And then Ridge C is oceanic. So the the surprising things for this particular transect is that in order for this breakup to have happened and given us these um, characteristics in the drill holes, you must have had fast lithospheric extension, but no mantle exhumation. We don't see any evidence for that. And so there's probably an advantage to what happened because there was already thin lithosphere that was happening before the rift started. And so that was able to produce more type magnetism, magmatism from normal temperature mantle. So the um, that's the main conclusions. And I hope I didn't run out of time. How are we doing? You're doing great. Thanks, Jan. Okay. I'm feeling it for Derek, who had to leave on short notice. Uh, if there's questions, okay. please uh, raise your hands and uh, I'll put them in the chat. And uh, I have a question uh, to start off. Uh, the Joydis resolution will be ending operations in September. Is that is that right? Unfortunately, yes, what, that's right. What's the plan? What what do we, what what needs to happen to to continue this kind of research? Well, um, did Sun Jen get on here to join this call? She, uh, you know, some uh, the uh, Joydis resolution. They are talking about maybe trying to 
build a new ship, but I don't think there's any plans in the works for any time soon. Um, they're still going to be doing, of course, whatever they can do with the GQ, uh, the Japanese drill ship, and mission-specific platforms um, under the IODP program. But, um, you know, it's just really unfortunate. We've got all these cores uh, that could still be looked at. And if you think about um, Olson's talk, and all that great science they can do with those imaging techniques from the, uh, you know, for, for, you could go back and look at a lot of cores from other places with new techniques. And, you know, definitely people can use the core repository to get at more questions of, you know, ocean history, but um, there's still, I think there's still a real need for uh, actual continued drilling and sampling. And it's, it's just, uh, a disappointment to the community, I think, that the Jordy's resolution can't keep operating and that no new drill ship is yet available.